Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we have updates. I need to update you on a few things that you requested and some other things that you didn't, but I want to show them off. Before we continue though, I do want to make a little announcement. Miss Orchid Girl shorts. I'm not only going to post shorts there, but also short form content. I can post whatever I want there. So what I decided to do was also post updates there, very frequent updates. You guys always ask me, what happened to this orchid? Did you lose this orchid? Is it still around? Is it healthy now? And so on. But you guys know I mainly post tutorials, long form content, seminar style content here. But the short orchid updates, I will post there as much as possible. I'm gonna try to post every day, three, four minutes of something. So if you wanna watch that too, if you wanna stay up to date with all of these orchids and other funny stuff that I will post there, because it's, it's gonna be comedic as well well. It's my do whatever you want outlet. Do subscribe to that channel as well and watch it. I already filmed a whole bunch of videos today. I'm updating you on a lot of stuff in the future days. But today I'm gonna show you stuff that I know you requested for a lot of time, like the zygos. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like. It really helps it out. And why not subscribe? I do post multiple times a week, mainly tutorials and hands-on things. But from time to time, some updates as well. So with that out of the way, let us start with the zygos. I have one here, but I'm gonna bring more. Hold on. Alrighty, here we have them. So as far as the potting medium is concerned, many of you know that I switched to more of a soily type of a potting mix. Well, that has been working much, much better for me, especially in this environment. They really do seem to like it. The roots are growing very nice. They're getting nutrients, everything is okay. These are recently repotted, by the way and I don't know why, I put them in transparent pots. And I ran out of transparent pots, so I'm gonna unpot them and pot them in something else. I'm gonna take you along, we're gonna look at the roots. But anyway, they're growing very nice in a mixture of soil with either perlite, either bark for more aeration. So that is okay. From this point of view, I don't feel like I wanna go back to bark and moss with these guys, it's just not working out. So I'm not gonna insist on it. What is the issue with these guys is pests. Pests again and again. Not only thrips, but also, don't worry, this is inactive, but also mealybugs. Yeah, these guys had a lot, a lot of thrips and mealybugs. And I had to treat them all of the time. And sometimes it didn't end so well. Sometimes the new growth completely rotted. In some cases, I could only save a back bulb, like in this case, but this is such a beautiful one. And luckily for me, it decided to still grow. This is the beautiful green one with the white lip. I don't have an ID. I don't think I have an ID for any of these. This one has a tag. Zygopetalum green small. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they don't have IDs. I don't know exactly what they are. But do you remember that time when I found a lot of beautiful zygopetalums? Yeah, these are them. They're looking pretty sad, and that is not because of anything else other than pests. Now they're pretty okay, even with the mealybugs. It's treated, this is just remains. I completely spray them with alcohol, so there's nothing left. But for a while, it was really hard because the mealybugs would hide themselves in the new growths, especially the tiny ones. And it's tricky to put water-based solutions or even alcohol in new growths because you can rot them, especially if it's cold or cooler in the grow room. So it has been a bit of a hassle, but I think they're on their way to recovery right now. It's gonna take a while but they're still here. I'm grateful for that. Currently, I keep them somewhere on a bottom shelf away from my main shelf of orchids, which is here on the other side. The density of orchids, you know, it's not so big. And I'm keeping an eye on them. I'm treating them. I'm spraying them with my leaf shine from time to time a little bit just to prevent thrips. It will also prevent mealybugs. But yeah, they are still here. They're just not happy. So that's the update with the zygopetalums. For me, they work better in a soily mixture. They don't like to dry out way too much and in my environment, things dry out. But with bugs, oh boy, they are magnets. What to do? Can't win them all, right? 
Next up, some girls you haven't seen in a long time, my wrinkle Lelias. To my knowledge, there are only two orchids in the wrinkle Lelia genus. By the way, wrinkle Lelia is not wrinkle stylus, let's say cross Lelia. No, that's not even possible. It's a genus on its own. It's a cat Lea type orchid. And in the past, they used to be brassavolas. But my Digbiana and Glauca are still around. One of them looks a little better than the other. I think some of you would expect this one to look better if you're older on my channel, but no. Actually, what happened, again, this one had thrips. Do we see there's no more glaucos formation on its leaves? That's because I had to spray it with an oil-based solution to get her rid of the pests, and I managed to do so. I also did repot her a few months ago and I cut away the older growth, which looked pretty horrible and she is starting to grow slowly and surely, but you can see she's very, very set back. On the other hand, the Diana, no, Digbiana, that's Lelia. Digbiana looks fabulous. Do you see all of this white, it looks like white residue, right? It's not residue, it's not fertilizer, not calcium deposits, nothing of the sorts. It's absolutely natural. This one looks much, much better, right? Well, this one, for whatever reason, was not affected by the thrips. So as expected, it did grow pretty, pretty great. It is doing great, no blooms yet, but this is a more recent purchase, actually. So I'm patiently waiting for her to create some blooms. I'm really curious if I can make her rebloom under lights. These orchids are notorious, at least on the internet and in articles, for wanting direct sunshine. In the past, I did manage to bloom this one fairly easy, not necessarily with a whole lot of light. This one, not yet. I'm curious though, because she is looking great. She never bloomed before, so she's a younger orchid. So I'm hopeful that maybe next year I'm gonna have some blooms. I'm trying to see if I have a sheath in this one. No, I don't think so. So this one blooms once a year, sadly. It's not gonna bloom in the middle of summer for me. It blooms typically in spring, again, for me. So I'm gonna have to wait until next year, but at least she's developing pretty great. What a difference, right? Well, that's the thing. Pest infestation actually weakens orchids and plants in general. And when it comes to orchids with either slow growth or very timed growth, like these guys, setback lasts forever. <laughs> oh no. So I'm, so I'm not sure when we're gonna see blooms from this one, but it's okay, bloomed two or three times in the past, in previous years. Hopefully this one will bloom next because this one looks a little bit better than this one. I didn't mean that, I'm sorry. Do you guys feel bad whenever you say something bad about another orchid? I don't know why I have the sensation to not say it in front of them. It's weird. But anyway, these were the wrinkle Lelias. I don't know how many of you will remember this because this is ancient history. It's not ancient. The next orchid will be ancient history. This is semi, maybe medieval. <laughs> All right, this is a polychylus type. This is Phalaenopsis brother glory. LF, this orchid right now. I, look honey, what do you make of this? Doesn't it look nice now? D don't, don't you dare. <laughs> She's a dangerous little creature. Yes, you are. Maya has a floor day today. She wants to chicken on the floor. Right, so this one I purchased many years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I've had it for many, many years. And this is how it looks like. It shouldn't be this small. I do believe it should be as big as at least a Violacea. But no, look at that. What happened to this orchid? Well, I'm gonna try to recollect because it's it's been a while for me as well. Ever since I purchased it, it really decided not to grow quite at all. And actually the initial plant was this one. It's been kind of sitting in this limbo for the past four years, five years, whenever I purchased it. And it did not ever do anything. And if you remember, at some point I received those grow lights from Gemma, which I still have. They're not my favorite because they're spotlights and I prefer tubes, but they're actually very good. So I think in that video, this was one of the subjects that I worked on and I wanted to see if I can improve something in its life with the light. So this growth was pretty pale, pretty, ill looking, he wasn't doing anything. And I tried everything from fertilizer to potting mix to, I don't know, I tried everything. And the only thing left was light, change the light, put on some grow lights. Did it do anything? No, <laughs> actually no. 
But one thing that happened at some point, after years of waiting around wondering what the heck is wrong with this orchid, it decided to put on some keikis. And these are the keikis, one here, one here. And oh boy, these keikis grew better and more vigorous than anything this orchid ever grew. We have some roots growing inside the medium. Don't get me wrong, compared to other orchids, she's not the most vigorous. I mean, I have others which grow much more vigorous. They create more roots, but this, this is a good start. I'm happy about it. I have at least two root tips here developing, which is great. I didn't used to have that. Maya, I don't want to hurt you with my chair. You want to sit on the table with me? Maybe? So, the keikis are starting to finally take off. What is wrong with this orchid? I don't know. But my, no honey, it's not for you. <laughs> my suspicion is that there was a physical thing wrong with it. Honey, don't damage it. I've been waiting for years for this orchid, okay? Don't, don't do me dirty like that. <laughs> so instead of actually having a disease, maybe this orchid has a deformity. Deformity of the crown or the axis or things of the sorts, which you know what? It's kind of not very common, but it happens quite a lot. I'm gonna show you another one that is currently doing something suspicious. Because the keikis, they look pretty okay to me, at least so far. Yeah, they're tiny. This was a seedling when I purchased it, but at least they're growing. And yeah, I do think I have two of them. So the update on this one that I'm not sure who remembers how this one looked like. I'm gonna try to find some footage in old videos. The update is we're doing fine, finally. Why? I don't know. The keikis are the future. It's kind of reminiscent of my Shilleriana, which again, I saved from a dying mother plant with very <laughs> weird behavior. I'm not sure what was wrong with it. Same story here, not sure what happened to the mother plant. It didn't look diseased or anything. It didn't have pests, something happened. But at least now we're okay, so I'm gonna stop wrecking my brain about it and just accept it and look forward to hopefully have some healthy keikis. All right, this is ancient history. This is my Phalaenopsis bulina. I purchased it seven, eight years ago. I know I have a spotlight on it from 2015. So at least seven years or so. Well, this girl has been through a lot and some of you who are older on my channel know. We had the spider mite infestation back in Romania in the balcony days. Well, that left the orchid with a virus, the orchid flag virus. We have a video on that from many years ago. Check it down below in the description. Guess what? It survived the virus. Then we had thrips and other things here in my new country. Well, it survived that as well. Currently looking okay under the circumstance, right? Well, look what it did recently. This leaf is a little deformed. Now, typically with this orchid, I do have issues with new leaves when the flower spikes are right on top or on top of the crown. When the new leaves form and they're very tender, they can get stuck in the flower spikes. So I always make sure to move the flower spikes or cut them even. <laughs> Sometimes I do that because I like the leaves. Well, this didn't happen this year. I had no issues with the flower spikes and I also didn't have any issues with thrips on this particular one. To my knowledge, I really don't see anything and it created a pretty weird looking leaf. Now, if you look closely, you can see there is another leaf in the middle forming. So I thought, well, the usual weird leaf, it happens after a number of years, there are some anomalies happening, it's not unheard of, which yeah, it could be that, or I could actually have issues with the crown because look, this orchid is now producing a little keiki right here. And while Phalaenopsis can definitely make keikis whenever they feel like it, not necessarily when they're sick, they also produce keikis when the crown is damaged. So it's important to put what you see in context. What is the context with this one? Possibly damaged crown, basil keiki, hmm, suspicious, <laughs> very suspicious. So it kind of ties with the other polychylus that I showed you in the sense that something must have happened here because really this is not damage produced by any bug or any snail or anything for that matter it has been in that cabinet for a while now it has been potted again for three years i need to repot it this year roots are okay there's no issue with the hydration or things of the sorts what could it be well other than the fact that 
it could possibly still have the orchid flag virus, which does not behave like this. It's not a symptom of that. Other than that, I really don't know. It could be a genetic anomaly. It could be something related to the fact that it might be a little weaker than others due to the virus. I really, really don't know. But stuff like this can actually happen. And I said quite a while back that I wanted to get a double for this one. Then I said, no, I don't want to get a double because I love it so much. This is the orchid that I hug in the top 10 10 don'ts video. It's been a while. Um, I love it. I really love it. And I don't want to replace it, but it's behaving a little weird. I will definitely keep it absolutely. What I'm thinking though is if this keiki manages to grow beautifully, I'm gonna pull a shilariana on this one. I'm gonna do the same thing. If this crown is damaged, when the keiki is old enough that I can remove it, I'm going to refresh, let's say the entire orchid and yeah, do what I did with the Shilariana. It worked out great for the Shilariana. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful monster now. Um, might work with this one as well. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know that there's no me without my Belina. It's been a while <laughs> since I had her. And actually, I went down sort of the memory lane a little bit lately because uh, I was curious. When was the first time that I encountered or learned about the Polychylus? Which I did make a tutorial or remake my initial tutorial from seven years ago. I made it this week. Check it down below if you didn't see it. So I thought, when was my first Polychylus actually? And going back, I actually bought my first Belina or what I thought was a Belina. It never bloomed in 2000. 13 and I ordered it from Malaysia. Oh boy, oh boy. Now, was it a Belina? I'm not sure. One of them, I, I received two. One of them bloomed, did not look like a Belina. I have a video on the two together. Uh, but yeah, I personally have been trying to have a Belina before I started my YouTube channel. When I was seeing beautiful pictures of it on eBay and they were all like rare orchid. And I believed it because, yeah, rare orchid. I never saw it in flower shops, right? That's when the rare craze started for me, 2012. <laughs> I told you this is ancient history at this point. How old am I? Very old. <laughs> I feel very old. But anyway, that's when I had my first Belina, but it wasn't what I wanted when it bloomed, at least one of them. One of them I lost to spider mites. And this is the second Belina that I've loved and cared for ever since. And she might have some issues, but if I manage to rejuvenate it through the keiki, you know what? I'm gonna be happy. So yeah, that's the update with the Belina. One of the mascots of this channel, actually. I actually thought of a few more orchids that I wanted to update you on after I filmed everything. So this is a little bit later. So here's one of them that probably you haven't seen in ages. This is Encyclia vitellina. Again, not looking very good, right? Well, again with this one, we had some issues with pests and the bad thing is that just like the Rincolalias, it has a very nice glaucose sheen on the leaves and spraying oils and even too much water eliminates this sheen and makes it look pretty bad. So what I decided to do was just manually remove whatever pests I could. I didn't fully spray it, but I also removed the old growth, which was most affected. And well, things are not going very, very well. It is dehydrating. I still have some roots up top. They are kind of dehydrating as well. So I digged around a little bit and I discovered that the roots are actually not long enough. So we cannot do what we did with the other Cattleya, which grew roots on top. So I can't really direct the roots inside because they're already inside. They just are too short to absorb anything, to reach further down beyond the bark layer. So what I'm gonna do with this one is probably arrange a little bit of an ICU setup and try to save it. Although I have to tell you, I do have some doubts about this particular one because this one was never very vigorous for me for whatever reason. So again, this is one that I'm looking to replace or at least have a double because I really, really like it. But at the same time, I do wanna try it first to give it a chance. So probably I'm gonna sit it on top of sphagnum moss in a little jar or something, maintain it rather moist around the root system and just make sure that these roots on top touch the actual moist sphagnum moss because right now they just don't have enough power to grow through. It's 
a little bit of a vicious cycle. It's not that the setup is wrong. Sometimes you have orchids that are just dehydrated or depleted that do start to create new roots, but they run out of energy before the roots get to the actual moist part of the pot. So either you're gonna spray the top twice a day or something, either we're gonna do an ICU, which is what I'm gonna do for this one. But there she is, still around, always had issues with this one. I'm not giving up on it just yet. If I find a double at my favorite cell I'm gonna snatch it up and just have both of them. Why not? I love vitilinas. I just don't have major luck with them. Also, I wanted to show you how my bucket orchid is doing. This is the big Cattleya Burana Beauty that we did actually pot in the biggest pot that I have. It is a repot me pot. It is perfect for vandas because they grow pretty big, but it's also perfect for cattleyas, which are very, very big as well. And this one is a big cattleya. And in that video, I told you that it will take over the pot, even if the pot is ginormous. So let's take a look, see, shall we? And well, the pot is big. It didn't take over the pot just yet, but it's starting to, it is producing quite a lot of roots. And I do start to see them on the sides, peeking through here and there. Most of them are still inside. It's, it's gonna take a while until they travel, but we are getting there. Now, in recent history, I have started to actually reduce the size of my orchids. I have a video on it, check it down below won't actually give you the entire explanation, but what I do now is actually divide, especially my cattleyas and sympodials. Because really, I don't need something like this just to have a particular individual. All I need are just three, four pseudobulbs, pretty much, that's it. If I have an orchid that I really, really like, and this one I can't really, really like, then yeah, I'm gonna let it go wild and, you know, just sacrifice some space for it. But I'm not doing that for all of my cattleyas or all of my orchids. This one is an exception because I really like the Burana Beauty. It is very, very, very fragrant and it grows very fast. It is robust. Bad side is it has a tendency to actually become pot bound and grow a little bit too fast. Good side is it's beautiful, it's fragrant. So things like these, I'm not gonna do them very often. This is my only Cattleya that it's this size. I don't wanna keep all of them like this cause I'm gonna run out of space. But let me just show you what these pots are better at. They're great for Vandas. This is one that I recently repotted in December and it's actually a keiki. The mother plant had some issues with the stem, so I just removed the keikis. It's the Vanda tricolor, which I have for a few years. But as I was saying, the mother plant had some stem issues. It was bare. It had some poorly grown leaves up top. So I decided to refresh it. I saved the keikis, discarded the mother plant, which was really not healthy at all. And I potted it in this, I think it's eight inch slotted pot. And I already see roots on the sides growing. Look at that. It is perfect. This keiki is already adjusted to being potted. So these pots combined with these buckets that I find locally make for a really good setup for the bigger vandas. The pots are of course repot me. You can find them if you live in the USA and the buckets most probably you will not find unless you live in Cyprus. But yeah, that's my preferred setup right now for vandas. And lastly, let us end on a positive note, although this wasn't the purpose of this video, it's not one of those boost your confidence updates. It's the eh, not so happy <laughs> updates. But anyway, my Paraphalanopsis labucensis is opening her buds. I'm so excited. I've been growing this one ever since she was a tiny little baby. And look at her today. She's a big girl and she's gonna grow even bigger. Downside with it, has the orchid flick virus, I do believe, because it did have some um, spider mite damage when I first arrived to Cyprus. First year, spider mites, I had them. I got rid of them, they're not a problem anymore, but this virus lingers a little bit, but it's, it's not a dangerous virus compared to others. Um, but if it's gonna behave like the Bolina, you know, she's gonna be saved. So I'm okay with that, even if she doesn't look very Instagram ready. I care more about the history, but Look at the blooms, she's opening her blooms. Now, sources say that the blooms should smell a little bit like cinnamon. So far there is no fragrance, but she's been open for like a couple of days only. But I am very happy and it gives me a sense of achievement, you know? I did this, yay, I managed to keep it alive. 
kinda, barely. <laughs> but I did manage to keep it alive until she reached maturity. Again, this is one of those that I considered getting a double just in case, but no. I like to live dangerously and just take care of this one. I don't want a double unless this one is giving up on me. If she ever decides that's it, I don't like your face anymore, I'm gonna give up, then I'm gonna get a double. But it's hard to find this orchid at a more mature stage. You only find the little cake, not cakeies, the little seedlings. And I'm I'm done with the seedlings. I'm, I'm okay. I've been through it. I prefer the mature version. I keep doing this, I like it. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't intend to give her up, even if she looks a little bit stained. <laughs> because look, look what she did for me this year. How can I not love her? So with that said, let us end the updates here. I will continue updates and other topics, short topics on my second channel. I have the good and the bad as well there. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this little update and hearing about the history of some of these orchids and seeing how they look like today. If you want to keep in touch with me on social media, just search for me, I am at Miss Orchid Girl, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel because I post multiple times a week. And with that said, hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.